All right, so this is my riser. We're up on the stage now, flying high. About six feet off the ground here, so it's quite fun. Um, this is where I spend most of the time on stage. This is kind of like my studio put on stage. Uh, it's probably better than my studio, actually. Yeah, it definitely is. So yeah, starting from here, this is pretty much percussion land, like drums, um, wood blocks, cowbells, toms from my, actually my first ever drum kit, which my dad got me when I was about nine, still using these. They sound great. Uh, this symbol I stole from college. Sorry, college. And this one I bought. So yeah, still using pretty old stuff, um, but it works for me. Little firecracker snare thing as well. And um, yeah, this is mainly just for fills. I don't really do too much like actual continuous beats on it. We try and keep that more like the original track electronic, uh, which is why I have so many pads here, because uh, these have the actual sounds that are taken from the songs. For example, we've got white noise here. And then you can flick across to the next song, and on the pads is the bass line for FVU. And then moving all the way to the end of the set, um, it changes into a latch, and that's where I hit the sample to start the song. Etc. So yeah, I spend most of my time playing the drums, um, whilst Howard's doing most of the keyboard stuff. So I'm kind of facing this way most of the time. Um, these four pads here are all linked to this SPD. So for this is a song called Moving Mountains. I spend a lot of the time playing hi-hats and these little noises. And then there's like a big drop and then I change to these pads and it goes crazy. And then these three pads here are controlled by this SPD, which you can't actually play the top of because it's kind of hidden away, but you don't really need to. These always stay the same. These are just big, 808 hits, basically, just like to kind of go in with these. You know, if I'm doing a big fill, you can just kind of and kind of mix the electronic with the acoustic a little bit more. Uh, this is a little mono tribe, um, which is by Korg. Don't know if you can see it. I think you can. Um, this is just for like blending, really effects, um, big like LFO, noisy explosions, kind of like this. You can do different kinds of waves, like that's a sawtooth, we've got square. So it's just really good for build-ups and drops and it's a good little blender for moments where maybe Howard's doing a ridiculous bass solo, stealing all the limelight, you know, he loves to do that. Um, yeah, moving on, this is like the computer area, I guess. Um, APC40 controlling Ableton. No, I haven't got any laptops actually on the stage. Um, we used to do that and after many incidents of drinks falling on them, them closing or just breaking generally, we decided laptops off stage. So this is just basically what, what is going on on the laptop. Um, big, nice, big screen for Ableton so I can see what's going on. Um, each scene's a different song and I just basically bounce out all the parts separate. So you've got your drums and then your synths and your bass and your vocals. So we've got control over all the levels. So does front of house, you know, they can adjust everything. And um, yeah, I don't really do much with Ableton. It's kind of just there for the bits we can't play. Um, you know, we didn't want this to be an Ableton set. It's a live show, we're playing instruments, so it's pretty much just play and stop. It's all we do with that. Um, got two MPD32s here, kind of MPC MIDI controllers. I, I use them at a really busy point um, in the set where it's this full kind of techno jam, where you've got the 909 just jamming this beat. And um, I basically bring Fire Starts to Burn in over this, and this is for a different song, and I just didn't want to have to keep flicking between them, so it's quite nice. You've got loads of different sends and loads of different effects you can do on each one without having to press loads of buttons. It's just there, ready to go. And yeah, you've got a couple of sends, like I said, for the effects, just as a rough guide. This is like a low pass and a high pass. Delay. And um, reverb. So yeah, I just kind of jam out on that and how it plays the bass for that song. Um, but yeah, it does get used a few times in the set. This one's for Bang That. Same kind of thing. Um, yeah, I'm kind of playing that whilst playing the toms. That's a pretty stressful part of the show for me, which is good fun. And yeah, that's all happening with the 909 doing the beat. So for that whole 15 minutes, there's actually no track happening at all. It's all live, which is really fun. We're trying to get more and more of that going on. But it's hard with two people, but we're getting there. Uh, I've got a little LPD-8 thing here, which is basically just a tiny little drum machine, what, MIDI controller, I use it for drums. It's just always there on the same sounds, ready to go, just for big effects, kind of goes in, in with this Monotron, you know, just kind of, just for little hits if you need it. 
If you're doing like a big build up, it can be quite fun with this. Change the pattern to. Yeah, so that's just always there, ready to go. If I need any big, oh yeah, it does one big massive. At the end of the show, we all go, see you later. And then we get off. Uh, <laughs> what have we got left? Oh yeah, Mallet Cat. This is like quite a new thing. I've only been using this for a few weeks um, since this kind of new setup. Um, yeah, it's basically a MIDI controller. It can do whatever you like. Because we're playing in such big venues now, we really wanted something that was a little bit more visual to look at. You know, you stand there playing the synth and people can't really relate to that, which is why the drums are so good. But with this, it's kind of best of both worlds because you've got the big visuals of the sticks like moving and people can kind of understand where the noise is coming from. And then last but not least, the oldest bit of gear on stage, the trusty Juno 6. Um, every producer probably knows what this is. You've got the 106 and the 60 and the 6. Um, I have the 6 because it's got the ARP, um, and I use it again in this kind of techno jam that we do. Um, I just kind of play in a few chords and make the most of the uh, amazing ARP that it has, the arpeggiator. You can really go pretty crazy with this thing. Um, so yeah, that is the whole setup. So yeah, uh, this is my side. Um, and I generally take care of the chords and uh, melodies and singing as opposed to the guy who does a lot more of the drums. Um, I suppose we'll start here. This is my Juno 60. Uh, it's different from the one you saw over there, which is Guy's Juno 6. Um, I use it to do a bass line sound in the song Hourglass, um, where it sounds like this. And it um, shakes your soul if you're in the room. <laughs> but yeah, and then I've got this screen here which kind of tells me exactly uh, what patch I'm on and what instruments are up. So from song to song, I press this button and it says, instead of hourglass, it changes to holding on and that changes all the instruments here to the correct setting for that song um, instead of having to go through and do it manually, which I used to do and it took ages. Um, most of the gig, I use this keyboard here. Uh, which is the Akai MPK261. Um, this controls all of my MIDI instruments, um, which we take the exact instruments that we used in the songs in the Logic file, um, so that it can sound exactly the same as all of the records do. Um, so for songs like Echoes, um, I play these ones where we've assigned chords to each key. And then other ones like um, like Nocturnal, for example, I play another uh, chords where I actually play the chords. And um, we've got these things here assigned to things like Cutoff so that we can change parts in the song. Um, so yeah, that's generally used for most of the pads where I'm playing chords, except for a couple of songs where I use this. Um, which is the Roland Gaia, which I think is probably the oldest piece of equipment that we're still touring. Um, it's been touring since probably our first ever show. But yeah, I still use that for songs like Latch, um, where again, I play the chords uh, and I control the cut off and things like... Uh, and stupid ending things uh, like this. That's actually how we end the show, um, in a really overdramatic style. Um, and then, yeah, here is the SPD SX, which I use for our song Bang That. So, yeah, that has all the samples on. And that all runs through this uh, delay pedal that I've got here, which is, um, I have no idea what it's called or how to get another one, but I'd really like to, if anyone knows. Just write in. 
Um, so yeah, that's been with us for maybe three or four years now, and it just has a really cool delay. It's like a tape delay sort of effect. I mess around with that at various times throughout the show, affecting things that are coming through here and also through the track. And then, yeah, this is the Monotribe, which I use for generally for blending the songs similarly to how Guy does, but we have different sounds. Um, to make things sound a little bit more spacey. Um, but yeah, one thing I should mention is uh, all of the sounds that I make on this side of the stage are rooted through Guy's computer. Um, so that we can do things like compression and side chaining particularly. So if I'm playing some chords, um, we can use the kick drum to side chain those chords and do the bwah, bwah, bwah kind of sound. Um, but I'm still playing it live, so I think that's quite unusual. I haven't seen many other people doing that, but um, we've, we've somehow made it work. Well, our team and us have made it work. Um, so yeah, things like this are it's really important because if you're playing a, a bass line, like the one we do in our techno section, um, which is something like this. It gets sidechained by the kick that Guy's producing from his 909. Um, and if it didn't, it would uh, probably explode somebody. Um. So yeah, that's the Moog. I use that for various things, normally just for uh, sine waves to play the subs of tunes, but that one is a more of a an aggressive sound for our weird techno section where we get carried away and we actually make up the show for about 10 minutes. We just play it different every single night. Lastly, onto the Fender Jazz. Yeah, I've been playing this bass for quite a long time now. It goes through Guy's computer as well and uh, it changes the things like the EQ and the compression change on it depending on which song we're playing. Um, again, based on where guys are in the Ableton project. So for songs like uh, When a Fire Starts to Burn, um, we take the low end out of the bass and I just play the top end. And then for songs like White Noise, it's the opposite where I'm actually just playing the sub and there's a synth doing the top end. Um, but then again, in other songs like Super Ego and um, Nocturnal and a few others, it's just a normal bass sound with a bit of extra sub um, so that it sounds beefy like that. But um, but yeah, there's no, there's no really special effects. We get asked that a lot, like, you know, what pedals is it going through? And it's just going through a tuner. So not, not much. Maybe some distortion on some of the tracks in, within Ableton, but um, nothing too special, yeah. So yeah, I guess this is kind of generation three of the show. We started out with just a table and some pads and a keyboard and a bass, you know, and we just turned up and set it all up. Then we moved on to these, this two-table idea, um, and now, it's where we're at now with all this amazing stuff. And um, yeah, some of the changes we've made in terms of reliability and trying to keep the show rolling no matter the problem um, has really come along. Um, some of the stuff we've designed with the guys uh, who keep the show running in terms of the Ableton system and how it runs is pretty amazing. Um, I didn't even know if it existed before or not, but they basically have two laptops simultaneously running and you could literally pour a drink over one or shut it or break it and it would switch to the other one immediately without you even really hearing anything. You might hear a little, that's it. Um, so it's really great for us because we can just concentrate on playing live and we don't have to worry about computers crashing or whatever because we know that even if one goes down, we've got another one playing the exact same backing track like simultaneously. So there's none of that crap of just you know, laptops failing you because that's the last thing you want when you're just in the middle of playing something really difficult. So that's one of the main things we tried to work on was computer reliability. Other than that, like, we use a lot of hardware and it, it does go wrong. So, you know, if we have problems mid-set, uh, it's really kind of down to us to try and fix it. Like last night, for instance, this SPD, one of the left, left output went, so I was just hearing everything in the left and it was rubbish. So I had to just quickly pan it mono and the guys all, we all, you know, talk to each other using these mics here. This is a mic I can use just to talk to Howard, um, a monitor engineer in front of house, and I was just like, Everything's broken! So that's how we address those problems. <laughs> and then, yeah, we kind of, we can deal with it. Um, I haven't even shown you my guitar. Guitar's down there, yeah. Guitar sometimes is a bit of a difficult one because we have to get up on this platform over there as we raise up, which I'm, you might see in the show during Nocturnal. That's always a bit of a faff because I have to kind of put that on and, you know, get on top of the lift. Um, so there is, you know, there's always stuff that can go wrong and we do have problems live sometimes. Um, like Howard came in on the wrong beat with Moving Mountains last night, so I just stopped it, just started again. But yeah, I mean, to be honest, I kind of don't mind mistakes because it's live and that's what makes it live, you know, the risk of that happening. And um, you've got to be an integral part of the, the, you know, the show. And if I just leave Ableton running and walk off, like, it would sound really bad, which is good because um, that's what you want. So 
you know, part of the problems occurring and fixing them on stage is what makes each uh, show unique. But yeah, reliability has been pretty, pretty good so far. So touch wood, we'll be all good going forward. So that's us done. Thanks for watching. We've been Disclosure and that's been our studio science.